Hey team, welcome to Inside the Movie Photographer with Jason Bolan. Today I've got an extra special lineup. I've got six photographers that are at the top of their game in the film and television industry in the US and the UK, and of course me, uh, you know, getting there in Australia. Um, we've got Brian Douglas, we've got Susie Orner, we've got Amy Sphinx, we've got Gareth Gatrell, we've got Chibella James and Jay Maidman. Uh, we're going to do a couple of things. One of the main things we're going to be doing is uh, what we call Five Photo Folio. It's a little bit like the game we used to play as kids called Five Car Garage. We're bringing in five images, not necessarily our favourites, but just what we felt like at the moment. And we're all going to talk about the stories behind them and uh, what went into creating them. We've also got everyone having a little chat and filling people in out there that are interested in getting into the industry and what it takes, where you should be working uh, at uh, to progress, and uh, you know everything to do with the film stills and, and the film and television industry. So sit back and enjoy, and uh, as I said, this is part one. We've got three parts, and enjoy. Cheers. On today, or tonight for some of us here, I've got a pretty wicked lineup, and it all came about my buddy Brian Douglas. Um, we were having a chat going, hey, let's get everyone together on Zoom and have a little bit of a chat. And then it um, progressed into more where we thought, hey, why waste this little chat when we can be sharing a few uh, insider tips of what it's like to be on a movie set as film still photographers. So tonight I have a pretty cool lineup. I've got Brian Douglas, Susie Ornett, Amy Spinks, Gareth Gatrell, Chia Bella James and Jay Maidman. Now, um, this is a real treat for you guys. And not only that, but we thought we'd take it to the next level. And we we're all throwing five images in. And uh, it was pretty cool, actually, because Chia Bella sent me an email this afternoon going, how do I choose five? And I'm, and I'm like thinking, oh, well, you know, you just do it. And then when it came to me choosing my five, I was like, oh, OK, uh, this is really trippy. What do you choose? You choose stuff that are your iconic images from the film industry. Are, do you choose the images that mean the most to you in your heart? Um, so it's a really interesting spread of what everyone's uh, selected. I'm the only one that's seen them all. And um, I think this is going to be pretty cool little chat. So I'm going to bring everyone in. I'm going to start here. Um, now, I have to kick one person out because, uh, unfortunately, with uh, StreamYard, I can only have six on the screen at once. So um, at times I'll be out and we're just going to rotate it around. So we've got Amy Sphinx. Welcome, Amy. Hey, good to see you. Likewise. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. It's uh, good to be in on this chat. It's a real interesting group of people. It is, right? You've got a bit of an injury, poor thing. You've been working out too hard. Uh, yeah, I um, when I'm not shooting, I spend my time swinging around a pole, and that comes with injuries, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I mean, that happens when you're, uh, you know, I mean, like you're a pretty elite athlete, so um, you know. I, I'm, <laughs> I've, I've got a long way to go, but um, no, I do it competitively, so it does require a lot of time um, and effort putting in. Oh, that's cool. Okay, I'm going to bring Susie in. Hey, Susie, hey. how's it doing? Oh, it's going. Strangely, but well. That, that's very cool. Susie and I share um, bond duties together, which is which is really nice, and it's big uh, big boots to fill whenever um, I'm on and she's not. It's everyone's always oh, Susie, so nice of you, and it's like yeah, I know she is. It's like so. It's You're um. We're on the fun unit, on the fun unit where all the action happens, where everyone seems super sweet. All those big hairy stunt boys and less hairy stunt girls are really nice. I know, right? And it's like, and it's everyone is just like so cool. And it's, I mean, it's the unit that is selected by the producers, basically. And it's the family. I mean, like, as you know, you know, there's, there's crew that have done over, you know, 15, 16 films and, you know, their fathers worked on it, their fathers, fathers worked on, on the films. And it's like, it's super cool. Absolutely. And sometimes our stragglers get invited in as well. Yeah, right. Hey, I'm gonna bring I'm gonna bring BD in. Hey, Buster, how's it going from uh, Atlanta? Things are great, man. How are how's everybody? Well, well I'm good, girls. <laughs> awesome. 
The light's creeping in though now, Brian. Look, you've got a bit of sunlight. Yeah, it's uh, still early morning here. He planned that just so to to go with the treacly voice. It was just like get a little bit of a kick. <laughs> little kicker back here. You just need to get her right in now to get those night nice light beams. <laughs> All right. Hey, I'm going to bring Chiabella in. Hey, Chiabella. Hello. This is this Chiabella. I don't know if anyone. Well, I mean, we all know, but she's um, she's film crew royalty, and <laughs> film, film still royalty, and uh, brought up on a film set. So um, you call it royalty. I call myself a film brat. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. You know. My dad, my dad ran TV stations, so I was one of them too. It was kind of your film brat, and too. you know, it was. It's hard. It's hard. Hard. Uh, shoes to fill people always want to kind of bring you oh, down yeah. so you have to rise above it there's always that that you're always reaching for that you know <laughs> just just trying yeah. to get there just trying to follow that name but it's like being in a shadow you'll always, always be in the shadow nah, you, you can bust through, through it yeah, i don't mind being in that shadow you know <laughs> that's a good shadow to be in that doesn't mean the uh the previous generation is always the best so you know no oh no and don't get me wrong i i take it as a daily personal challenge to outdo my father so oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 just <laughs> remind him that <laughs> remind him that the crown's not going to sit there forever <laughs> <laughs> he sees me trying to sneak it every now and then <laughs> <laughs> right, i'm going to bring gg in Ooh. oh <laughs> I'm going to take Gigi out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I have the power. Hi, Jay. How's it doing? How are you doing? <laughs> Good, buddy. I see you elbowed him. <laughs> I know, right? How much fun is this? This is like... <laughs> yeah. Now, it was like, I'm going to bring him back in. It's like wielding an axe, isn't it? Gigi, you'll be fine. <laughs> no, but it's... it's um, you and I have never um, met in person, but we have um, uh, careers that yeah. kind of um, go parallel in a way, and and it's it's very cool. I'm a, I'm a massive fan of your work and the way that you conduct yourself um, in the film industry, and you're someone that a lot of us uh, look up to. So um, I'm so stoked to have uh, to for us all to be here and for people to. I feel like grandpa now. I think I'm the oldest, though. How old are you? Uh, 54. <laughs> 55, actually. Hold on. I was 55 um, a couple of weeks ago. So you're a 65 model, same as me. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Okay. So we can both be grandpa to all these all these children here yeah. tonight. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> talented to children. Hey, I'm going to yeah. take myself out and Gareth. Oh, how do I do this? Hold on. I'm going to have to take Amy out. I'm going to bring G-Man in. Take two. <laughs> He's back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can do this all night. You know this one. <laughs> no, I'm not going to. <laughs> <It's> not <laughs> <laughs> You're back. <laughs> take three. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's a, come on, say hello, little man. I love it. <sighs> hello. Come on, bring him back. Bring him to say hello. Is he? Has Thank he gone? He, he's gone. He's he just oh. wanted to uh, manhandle his father. In oh, the there you go. Oh, oh, oh. I want you to be quiet. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> oh. That's gold. Okay, so for that's everyone that's watching, he's a and American, isn't he? Gareth is a wonderful English still photographer, um, and uh, as much as he doesn't like me mentioning it, he he put himself through the hard works of becoming certified to be able to dive on film sets, which is um, a commercial rating, I believe, in the UK, and um, and his his underwater work is is absolutely fantastic. And we we're talking earlier about. Um, about specialising and not wanting to be known as specialists and stuff like that. And um, personally, I think it's uh, specialising is is a good idea, um, but you but it doesn't mean that you can't do everything else as well. So there you go, Gigi. Thank you. It's good to be part of this wonderful family. I'm trying to calm myself down because I am very flamboyant <laughs> or annoying, some may call it. No, not at all. 
I just like your workouts every morning. Oh, oh man, I forget at the moment. You just got to keep it positive, haven't you? And I think the workout stuff is really good. Have a bit of fun. You know, sometimes uh, make a bit of fun yourself, which I do very well. Thank you, Jake. <laughs> well, the thing that I find too, being older like um, Jay, is that I th that the staying fit part for us guys is really, really important because it gives us an edge over the younger crew that are all, um, you know, trying to m not move in on our jobs, but um, that, you know, that want to be um, up there in the, especially in the action world, um, you know, you got to, as, as photographers, we all got to stay fit, you know, it's like 12, 14 hour days, not for me, but some other people do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's your true pro. You just stay there for the shot and go. <laughs> well, except when it's action. Now, what am I going to do here? Oh, I'm going to bring Amy in because we're going to, as I said earlier, right, this is pretty cool. We've all got like five photos. Brian's got six and Gareth, you've got six. But um, I, I know, right? See, that's why I did that whole elbow out. I needed the extra one so I could hit you Hollywood people. That's what it was. <laughs> I think Hollywood's in, in UK now. I mean, you guys are the busiest people on the planet, which is um, which is really very cool. I mean uh you know i'm i'm fortunate that it's so busy there that i get to come over and work with you guys so you know that's really cool so, all right let's bring um let's bring amy in and uh should we go through some photos or what it, actually okay yeah. susie yeah okay so i get this sent to me a lot and i'd like to go around you guys like people want to know how you think that they how how they should possibly get into the film industry, what they have to do. Yep. So if you guys don't mind, I'm going to go around each one of you and, and um, Susie, go for it. Yep, that's happened a lot. There's a few people. Gareth here. Hello. Gareth's been in touch and some others. But, um, quite a lot of uh, new female stills photographers. Um, there's Sophie and um, Amy. Those people I have spoken to at some point. And... Uh, and I try and respond to everybody. And obviously, um, the advice has probably changed a bit in the last six or seven years in regard to cameras and everything else. But um, I always just say get experience, try and get on um, some low budget features, try and get out there and meet people because a lot of people try the job, a great photographers try the job and realize they hate it absolutely mm. hate it so that's the first thing is going see if you see if you like it see if you like being part of something because you're definitely not in charge that's the um you're in charge of yourself but you are part of a team part of the process so that's my uh my first bit of advice and then i yeah. get Sorry. back to me and get some get some shots and come through the kind of thing that you should deliver and then yeah go get some go get some experience and see what you think of it yeah, that's really good advice. And and BD it, Atlanta, you guys are, you know, one of the um, biggest production areas outside of Bollywood, <laughs> and um, you know, you must have a hell of a lot of people that you know move, that move there. That you know, young young photographers out of school and university that you know want a piece of the pie, so to speak, and. Um, you know, there's, you know, I say to everyone, there's no shortcuts and I'm not going to give you any shortcuts. I'll help you wherever I can, but I'm certainly not going to, um, give you my client list. Um, any advice for, uh, anyone out there? My career path was a little different in that I worked in radio for 30 years and had a fabulous career. And then, uh, my youngest moved away to uh, college or university and I thought, you know what? I've been shooting for, I shot all my life since I was a baby, but um, I wanted something different. And I'd been shooting music and had a lot of music clients for many years. And I took a chance either out of stupidity, naivete, <laughs> and emailed like six still photographers and kind of explained my situation succinctly and asked them if they had any advice. One of those people was Jason, was you. And you immediately hit me back. Everyone hit me back and encouraged me to do it. And it took me about a year, you know, to get my feet wet. Um, and then my first studio film was, I, I, it was a, a, an amazing experience with Don Cheadle and Ewan McGregor. But, you know, you, you've got to pay your dues. You've got to hustle. You know, you 
I don't know. It's not for everybody, that's for sure. But I absolutely love it and wouldn't want to do anything else. Yeah, that's, um, I think that's, that's the theme with all of us is it's, uh, it's not a job at all. It's, it's, um, it's a life and, and there's nothing about it that we don't love. You know I mean? You know, it's the, there's obviously a bit of yin and yang that goes on there, but at the end of the day, um, it's not really a job, is it? Because we just love it so much and turning up a set every day is, is an absolute joy. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so let's go to oh let's go to get oh no, I'm gonna bring in Cheer Bella. Sorry, Gareth. No, <laughs> come on. <laughs> I can I gotta keep a boy girl boy girl. Like the old days, like at school. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he took himself instead of you, Gareth. You get to uh, stay. <laughs> not for long. You one of those theatre crooks. <laughs> oh, yeah, all right. Um, Chia Bell, now you have a really interesting scope on this because as we brought it up earlier, you were, you, you were a film brat. You were brought up on a film set. So you have a very unique view of... Um, of how to get into the industry because you would have been asked this a billion times. I'm probably the only one whose answer is that I've tried to leave it um, <laughs> <laughs> desperately. Um, and I just keep coming back and, and I've finally given up on trying to uh, run away from it. <laughs> finally accepted that this is where I'm meant to be. Um, yeah, I, it's, it's a hard one for me to advise younger people on how to get in because obviously I, I just was born in the industry um I, think I was eight weeks old the first time I was on set so it's all I've ever known I don't know the process of you know trying to get into the industry um so for me it's more trying to give advice on how to do the job and how to get hired for the job which I think my advice probably matches everybody else's because it's the right advice um, in that you just, you know, if your friends are making a short film or a music video, shoot it for free. Um, if, if you're that young and that new that you haven't even tried it before, you know, you just know you want to do photography and what we do looks really cool and fun, go and do it. Get out there and start shooting. Um, beyond that, I think if, you, if you've reached the level that you are, you know, a good photographer, you just want to break into doing film, I do think, you know, reaching out to, to people like us and, and hearing about the other side of it, you know, seeing the pictures on the billboards does not tell you anything about the job. Um, <laughs> sure, they look cool, but they're about five of, of about 50,000 images that we've shot along the way. Um, yeah. And, you know, I think the best advice I could give would be if you're not familiar with the film industry, but you want to work on set before you even try to do a specific department, try being a PA, a set PA, you know, if, yeah. if that's even available to you. Because you might not get hired as a photographer without the experience, but you can get hired as a set PA if someone's willing to give you a shot. And as a set PA, you learn every department, you get to know the whole crew, you get to see how it works and how it functions. And that's a really good opportunity, I think, to see, A, if you love it um, or hate it. And, uh, and then from there, you know, you can talk to everyone, you can talk to every crew member and kind of get a feel for how it works. And, and you know, hopefully it's still photographer can show you what they're shooting and, and talk you through what the job really actually is. Well, um, not only that, but it also gives you an opportunity to pick out if you want to work in a different department. Right, right. So, yeah. it's, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, a really, it's a really good area to, uh, to go to, I think, so. Yeah, yeah, good advice. I like that. Okay, so Gigi, you in? <laughs> How long do I get to stay in, Jason? <laughs> yeah. I have an umbrella, like an old school umbrella. I feel like I should, you know, I should go this way. Just don't don't know, Do not encourage. So I don't know. If, uh, see, see the the big difference between me and Gareth, right? Gareth is doing these really, really cool um, Instagram live. Uh, feeds and he did one with Amy just recently and with an EPK. Uh, who, what, what was his name again? Bell. 
but yeah, right. And who's yeah, done, you know, like Mission Impossible and, you know, he's really stellar. But Gareth's lasts for 24 hours, whereas mine stay forever. <laughs> <laughs> I've got staying power, Jason. Oh. <laughs> so I'm going to rip myself out and you're going to like hook into this. Oh, right. Um, so I think uh, everyone else has pretty much touched on it really is the, the short film is the apprenticeship playground. And uh, those things obviously you don't get paid anything for. You get to put your toe into the water. And uh, I was very lucky to work with John Hurt and Jonathan Price. And I think that sort of gave me the opportunity to push forward quite quickly. But I do think we all enjoy and love our jobs, but you have to have a very thick skin. And I think you've got to put yourself sometimes in positions that you wouldn't necessarily do normally. Um, but to get those shots and to progress on, uh, I think you've just got to be able to have that, that ability to push in when people won't. And for me, I think the success of most photographers, the great ones here today, is down to not being afraid to get close to the actors. I think that energy that you capture in those moments is probably some of the most profound and hard hitting. And um, learn, learn a good hustle. But in a positive way, reach out to people when you've got something to say. Don't just keep saying it. Um, and the rest of it is making your own luck. Just keep working hard. And uh, I do think some people get too caught up on trying to create a style of photography because uh, there's only so many ways we can all shoot and grade images. I think it's more also about how you as a person operate on set. I think if you're likable, if you're easy to work with, um, I tend to always do what the client wants first, even though I may not think it's the really best thing to do. But then I'll always go back with what I think might work. But yeah, just hustle, be kind to people. Even if you're being uh, thrown a couple of hard times, just keep smiling. And uh, it seems to always shine when you smile. <laughs> the, 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 there you go. And I'm sure that... <laughs> no, I mean, like a guy like you on set is someone who brings the whole set up. And, um, and it's, always, uh, it's always a welcome, welcome crew member that can keep people's energies up and, and come with a great attitude. And not only do you do great work, but I know that you do do that. And that's why I can kick you out into the green room. Half of my job seems to be still, the other half seems to be like set therapist. Yes. Oh, yeah, like, like like really tell me things and talk to me. <laughs> I find myself sort of like putting out fires between people. Yeah. But not only that, but we, could, yeah, we, we have to we have to gauge the set um, to see, you know, who's who's having a good day, who's having a bad day, um, giving people space. You know, as we all know, you know, being an actor and and being, you know, a a key crew member is a difficult job. There's a lot of pressure, and and you know, we've all seen cast members get given five or ten pages and then have to come back and and deliver it 20 minutes later and it's mm. tough it's mm. really tough I actually and, think um, that's <coughs> sorry oh, sorry cutting you off you continue my friend no 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 i'm um, go go um, i think i was watching one sorry bro i was watching one of your youtube videos the other day with hopper and um exactly what you said then is that um I think Susie said it earlier is that there's lots and lots of good photographers knowing when to be in the room, when not to be in the room is really, really important because you could be great at shooting, but if you upset someone, you're not there. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, you know, it's, it's for, for me and, and everyone here, I, I know, and I, and I can see Jay agrees. It's like, you know, it's knowing what to walk away from. And, you know, we said it earlier, it's like, um, you know, you, 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 you choose your battles and, I've seen a lot of people on film crew, on film sets, um, go and fight a battle over a crap image, which is just going to set them up for a big fall a week or two weeks or three weeks or four weeks down the track when they really need a shot. And it's, it's the battle to fight, right? Yeah, cool. Okay. So, little Ames, and I only call you little Amy because you said the other day, that you're tiny. I had no idea. <laughs> yeah. I'm five foot three. <laughs> That's not that little. I'm, I'm small but mighty. <laughs> <laughs> British. Ooh. I was going to say, definitely mighty. I can see those biceps from here. <laughs> <laughs> I think it definitely helps with this job. I think you touched on it earlier that, um, you know, it is a physical job. 
and I found um, when I started um, cause a few years ago to do powerlifting as well. And when I started doing that and actually working on my strength training, it just made the job so much easier. And it makes you realize as well things like your posture. So, you know, we've got to get into some really weird positions sometimes. And when I first started, if I had to go low, I'd kind of like hunch over. Whereas as time went on and you end up with back problems, you realize, okay, I need to learn to be able to do like a horse stance, keep my back straight and just be in a half squat for a five minute Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> your thighs are screaming at you, but your, uh, your back is good. And I think that's the thing you want to look at the most. Mm. And your knees. Stretching need too. I have, I have discovered stretching is the key to everything for me. My back, like calves, quads, hamstrings, all the way up because we are like self and crouching. And as you said, in tiny little positions, I yeah. realized like, how tight that all was. I meant to, um, to Gareth the other day, I was doing a, a, we were filming a scene in the room and because we we're inside, mm -hmm. everyone had to take their shoes off. So we're all there in socks and, you know, the, the shoe covers. So it's slippy, uh, slippy feet on a laminate surface. And the only place that I could breathe to take the shot was behind a sofa. So I'm there kind of in my horse stance, nice and prepared with a straight back, getting ready to shoot. And as the cameras start rolling, my feet start slipping. <laughs> as the takes going on, I'm just getting lower and lower and lower. And, <laughs> and I ended up in splits behind behind the sofa that was still like wedged right up to me. So when they cut, I'm like, guys, can you help me? Because we're pushing over. <laughs> I think you might be the only one here who actually could make it to splits. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, For yeah. sure. So, so, Amy, just while we're in the middle of Amy's onset workout, um, <laughs> So that's your advice, be able to do the splits. <laughs> Nimble oh, and <laughs> it, it does help if you can, um, you know, if you can hold yourself really well and be light on your feet, then um, operators and other crew members are going to trust you more to be closer and in their space if they trust that you are going to get out of their way uh, and not be noticed. So it's, it's definitely well worth working on your um, agility, I think. No, that's really, that is true. That is very true. I mean, like, um especially from the blimp days remember those guys it's like five I still have nights. mine same here i have to use mine for the <laughs> oh jay go and grab it will you yes. so, yeah i mean like five nine minute takes whatever is holding on to a blimp and it's just like oh come on can you guys just get this done yeah. just well, oh my God. i just tell myself i don't have to go to the gym tonight i don't have to go to the gym <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and these are the old that? ones Oh, Jake, no. I'm going to pull myself out and throw Susie in. Can you give everyone a little bit of a chat through a Jacobson blimp? Um, yeah. Just so you know, um, I, I was an Aquatech guy, but we all started on, um, on Jacobson. The Aquatech is so much better than these. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> well, you know that I designed them with Alan Love, the owner from uh, Aquatech, right? Yeah. I, know, I know you won't use this bit, but I couldn't wait to get rid of this. Oh, Matt, brilliant. <laughs> So I think this from, uh, well, most stills photographers that, that didn't enter this world in the mirrorless age would have used one of these, a blimp, either a Jacobson or, or an Aquatech. Basically, camera goes in the back. God, it's so old. <laughs> <laughs> Camera's in there. Um, connected through uh, this into the front of your camera. So, and then operated. With two here. This is quite um, a decent one because it actually had the autofocus button. Some of them didn't. Ooh. In all manual, there was just one button. Um, and then you change, basically, you change lenses by either unflipping this, release your lens, put another one on, put a tube on, get different tubes for different um, lenses, of course. Um, and some of the tubes would incorporate um, the facility to, to zoom. Not all of them. Um, no window. Can't preview anything that you that you just shot. Please. Yeah. 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 Then the sun comes out. <laughs> and you click in manual. Say, scroll the wheel. Ah, oh. yeah. So mirrorless is um quite a joy in comparison to using the blimp. 
absolutely. Yeah. I'm sure we've all got one, haven't we? Somewhere? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, we use mine sometimes. Jacobson's, I even got a fat boy. I've got, yeah. Like, uh, I do. I did use one on Black Widow, but that was only to put it near a, an explosion. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're great as crash cams. It's like, <laughs> I still they're use, great, aren't they? yeah, yeah, they really are. I mean, I still use my Nikon D5s for a lot of the action. Um, just, uh, the, I throw I throw cameras around a lot and, and the mirrorless, for me, um, doesn't handle the action quite yeah. as well as right. what a DSLR. It's a little more fragile. It's, I would there's something more satisfying with a DSLR yeah. with the action stuff because and not well because the mirror doesn't cause you have to flick to a mechanical shutter anyway, otherwise you're getting the images as you pan with somebody. Um which are rubbish. Um but yeah, there's something slightly more satisfying than using a DSLR, I think, for action. There's that reassuring click, 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 click as well. But it's all yeah. it's all happening. All right. Do you do you guys I'm like I'll have my my mirrorless and I'll pick up my uh, my blimp and I'll just start shooting and I'll go, wow, that exposure is perfect. And then, I'll be, and then I'm like, oh yeah, no EVF. Oh, two stops out. <laughs> uh, yeah. 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 The first thing that I um, shot when I moved to mirrorless was um, one of the battlefield scenes on Outlander, and so you've got all these explosions going on and horses and stunt people. And I'm just there thinking, like, because the mirrorless camera do feel so much more fragile than the DSLRs. Like, you felt like with the, um, you know, the, the solid DSLR cameras, you could drop them and they'll bounce. You know, you'll pick them right back up and they are hardy. And I just remember having this little Sony going, oh, my God, I'm going to break it. I'm going to break it. I'm going to break it. <laughs> Thankfully, it survived. Just uh, out of interest, Brian, are you still using Fuji's? Um, and I use Fuji and Sony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's, what's, yeah. What's your thoughts on the two differences? Um, I love them both. They're all just tools, you know? I mean, um, I started with the Fujis and moved to the Sonys because of low-light capabilities. Yeah. Um, I'm a big fan of the Sony. But I also am a – you know, I use the Fujis a lot for behind-the-scenes stuff, it seems. Yeah. See, I love the Fuji, man. It just fits into the hand really well, and I love the raw file color, and it comes out of it. But – the focusing that's be the a9 right that's yeah yeah absolutely uh, i i love the form factor of the fuji i think it just looks and feels good in my hand but um the sony for focusing for me at least no no definitely sorry i just want to know the, the answer was to that because everyone seems to be using different formats of cameras and stuff yeah, yeah it's, evol it's evolving and mine isn't um my kit isn't back to a slick um i'm, I'm flipped flopping between things at the moment. As, uh, Which is that. interesting. We all used to be so connected to you know, whether you were Canon that. or Nikon or whatever you were. We all used to be so committed to them. And now everybody's become... Oh, 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 really. But, I, you know, me and the Fuji had a little fling and uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was time to move into the mirrorless world. Uh, so, yeah, that was, that was a waste of quite a few thousand worth of money because as soon as i put some more money into the fujis then the nickel came out it's like oh you know but anyway it's nice it's nice having shot film on set slide on set and then on digital and then gone on to um mirrorless as well i i'm like jason i will reach for a uh, digital slr for action stuff generally it just feels it feels like a happy I have my happy place, um, yeah. but the mirror this is, oh, yeah, yeah it's, it's life changing. And um, maybe my muscles aren't quite as big as they were, but um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's true. Uh, it's, it's made a huge difference to, to how your day pans out. Yeah, I yeah. find if I need to like squeeze in and get a little like, you know, portrait or something, my Fujis are my go-to, but the second we're outside, the second, things are exploding or running or even if I'm trying to back into a crazy corner, yeah. the cannons can take yeah. it. Yeah. Just count on them. <laughs> and now Mr. Maidman. Yeah. You know, you know that I've been like uh, a massive fan of yours for a million years. Like, and so I would like to hear your advice too for, um, for what people and, and uh, that are interested in getting into the industry. 
and you know like like we all agree there's no shortcuts you have to suffer for your art and and you have to work really hard and you know you, then you can all be a 20 year overnight success like the rest of us um but yeah. um, you know the thing the thing about all of us guys as unit still photographers is that hardly anyone has ever heard of our names outside of the industry yet we are probably the most published photographers on the planet would you agree? Yeah, potentially. yeah, potentially. I mean, I think everybody brings something outside of stills photography to stills photography. So I think it's incredibly important that you get your experience doing something where you have no control over the outcome, whether that's sport, performance arts. Uh, it's a great way to learn to come into our industry where you've got no control over lighting where people are in the room compositionally but not we would like them to be there and they're not because they doubt the they actors have hit their mark so you have to work around it and unless you're a flexible person that can that can work around other people and not being in control of a lot of it then um i don't think you would be suited to work in film industry and you definitely have to be a team player mm, yeah absolutely um, everything is, you have to be a team player because although we are a department of we're one of the very few people that has to interact with every single department yeah yes yeah, 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 yeah. yes a hundred percent yeah and you know, all that, you know going to the prop department to, to get a hand prop that the studio want you to photograph because they they need to have some photographs of it to make a toy. You know, you're there across every single department. You're not just sitting on the on the um, set waiting for it all to collide. No, I agree. And and you know, for for us that are lucky enough to have international careers, um, you know, I find that you run into the same people everywhere, and and I call them user friendly because it's usually the people that do their deal go and do their job and uh, don't complain about it. It's the ones that um, get there and aren't happy with the deal they did and start trying to change it. And, you know, you can yeah. be the best crew member, you can be the best photographer on the planet, but if you're that person that um, tries to renegotiate or whatever, um, you don't leave your own postcode. So, yeah, I think you, you've <laughs> really hit it on the nail there that, you know, being user-friendly is pretty much key for for us and anyone on a film set well yeah. and anywhere in the workplace i mean you know frankly nobody wants to work with somebody that's a bit of an ass you might want to work that out but, yeah. um yeah you know, and and hence you don't those people don't turn up again do they you don't see them very often yeah, it's true. It's nice when you get to set and there's those familiar faces around the camera yeah. and they you've already earned their trust you know if there's mm. if there's Three or four of those on the actual set, then you um, you know that it's going to be fine because they start making space and that leads the way with with the other people who you might not have met. Um, and it's it's yeah. the loveliest feeling of uh, yeah, of being like oh good, I'm home. This is great. This is uh, yeah. yeah. Hey Susie, you, have you forgotten to introduce something someone to us? Yeah, I can't think who's here. This is my daughter Elodie. She's just been hi. Um, hi Elodie. Um, homeschooled by dad on different uh, trees and plants. So that's probably what's been happening and doing some- Well, Melody's fun. more than welcome to to uh, to stay and join. It's like, I think we should all be allowed to take our kids to work. <laughs> yeah, she still has not been on set yet. And uh, yeah, um, that will will happen at some point. That's that is- so she got the memo about the little <laughs> What's that? Hey, so team, I reckon we should hook into a few photos because I want to see what everyone's um, brought to the table and uh, the reasons why, because I know that every photograph that you guys have put in today out of I don't know. Have you guys ever heard of the um, the uh, the game Five Car Garage? 
you know, no. you pick five favorite cars that you want to have in a garage and and so this is a bit like five photo folio sure. <laughs> so so there you go and and um are you guys up for that should we have should we give that a yeah. crack yeah okay. so team i hope you enjoyed episode one with all the gang um i had so much fun it's not very often that we get to be in the same room together so uh it was all a bit of a laugh and and uh, i hope you found a lot of the information and the conversation insightful and can help you and in, in where are you going at the moment um we're going to hook straight into the photos tomorrow on episode two so uh, come and join us please subscribe and please ring the little bell so that uh, you can be notified of the next episode thanks guys see you later